welcome everyone to um, Village uh, Board meeting. We have a uh, hearing to start this evening's uh, meeting with uh, regarding East Field Subdivision Special Service Area um, public hearing. Um, I call the hearing to order and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Carbonaro? Present. Daney? Present. Here. Gansey? Here. Hopkins? Here. Rinky? Present. Sawanski? Here. President Wallace. Here. Um, Madam Administrator, are you going to be discussing this or is it um, Roberta? Actually, I'm, I'm going to do it, Mayor. Can everyone hear me? We can. Sure. Okay. So uh, this is a public hearing to consider the establishment of a special service area for the Eastfield subdivision. The public notice was published in the Daily Herald on October 27th, 2020, and a copy of that notice was in your packet. The waivers of notice have been received from both the previous owner, which is the taxpayer of record, and the new owners, Pulte Home Company, LLC. Uh, establishing this special service area would provide a backup service for the management of the stormwater, detention, retention, management, and um, drainage and wetlands on the property if the developer Pulte or the Eastfield Homeowners Association fail to perform the services. It allows for the village to levy a, an annual tax of 0.04% per annum of the assessed value of the subject property to pay for the ordinary services and maintenance of these areas. And then lastly, it allows for the issuance of bonds if necessary to pay for the cost of extraordinary services, including cleaning and dredging stormwater detention and retention ponds, replacing storm sewers or restoring wetlands. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to the mayor. All right, thank you, um, Roberta. We have uh, any questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, um, Chris, do we have any hands raised? Um, those of you that are um, participating in this Zoom uh, meeting, and uh, there's a few different ways that you can engage with uh, when requested to. Um, I believe you could raise your hand, you can type chat, um, and we will pick up both of those particular uh, scenarios. Is Chris, is anyone raising their hand? No, they aren't, Mayor. All right, if there's nothing else, um, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Moved by Trustee Danny, seconded by Trustee Gansey, I believe. Yes. So clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Carbonaro? Yes. Danny? Yes. Gansey? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Rinky? Yes. Sawanski? Yes. The hearing is adjourned. Uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Village of Bartlett board meeting for November 17th, 2020. I call this meeting to order and again ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Carbonaro? Present. Daney? Here. Gansey? Here. Hopkins? Here. Ranky? Present. Zawanski? Here. President Wallace? Here. Um, we have requested, um, uh, Lorna, you told me the pastor's name. Uh, it's Pastor Corey Shoemate from Christ Community Church. Corey Shoemate from Christ Community Church to do our invocation this evening. Immediately following the invocation, if everybody can mute themselves, um, we can, um, or actually we'll just have a moment of silence in lieu of the Pledge of Allegiance with what's going on right now. So, um, Pastor, um, your invocation. Very good. Uh, good to be with you guys uh, this evening, even if virtually in these interesting times. Grateful for each of you and uh, your service to our community. Uh, before we begin, would you pray with me? Uh, Heavenly Father, we first say thank you. Uh, thank you for your constant loving care for us. We thank you for life and physical and mental health that allows us to be here gathered, even virtually today, to fulfill our callings. Uh, we are grateful for your constant provision for us, for camaraderie and friendship, for the ability to be involved in the work that you've called us to, and for the honor of bearing weighty responsibilities. 
Uh, you've said that citizens should obey governing authorities since you have established those very authorities to promote peace and order and justice. And so this evening we pray for Kevin and the trustees here today. Uh, we ask that you would extend grace as they lead, uh, that you'd give them wisdom to govern amidst the conflicting interests and issues that we're experiencing today, uh, to navigate the tough waters of leading in a season of COVID, uh, a sense of welfare of uh, the true needs, the people that are under their care, uh, a sincere thirst for justice, confidence in what is good and right, the ability to work together in harmony, even when there is honest disagreement. And God, we pray for personal peace in their lives and joy in their task of leadership. And lastly, uh, God, we pray tonight for the agenda that is before us. Uh, we pray that you'd give an assurance of what would please you and what would benefit those who live and work in and around the village of Bartlett. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor uh, Shumate. Um, perfectly stated with all the craziness going on right now. I think there's a real call for everyone to show some grace and um, humility and uh, understanding for differences of opinion. So thank you so much for that. Um, next, if we can just uh, spend a couple minutes uh, reflecting um, Maybe just a moment of silence for those that have been affected uh, now and in the past and, um, and for um, our, our first responders that are under so much pressure right now. Thank you all. Um, moves us to our consent agenda this evening. The consent agenda will be enacted in one motion. There'll be no separate discussion on any item that's on the consent agenda. Um, at this point, is there anything any uh, trustee would like to add or remove from the consent? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda, which will include the minutes, committee minutes from October 20, 2020, uh, board and committee minutes from November 3, 2020, the consent this evening will also include bills list from November uh, 17, 2020. The consent this evening will include under Building and Zoning Committee, um, items A1, under Community and Economic Development Committee, item B2, under Finance and Golf Committee, item C1, under License and Ordinance Committee, item D1, under uh, Public Works Committee, item F1 and F2. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Danny, seconded by Trustee Hopkins. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Ranke? Mute. You're muted. Sorry, amateur. Uh, yes. Sawanski? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Danny? Yes. Gansey? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. The motion carries. Next item on our agenda this evening is our treasurer's report. Mr. Treasurer. Thank you, President Wallace. Uh, yes, in your packets for tonight is a treasurer's report for the month of September. Also included in the packet is a sales tax report. We had $233,289 received in November. That was for June activity. It was actually up $12,000 compared to last year. Uh, through November, though, we were down about $82,000 or 5.5%. Uh, also included is the motor fuel tax report. We received $142,172 compared to $137,000 last year. So it's uh, motor fuel tax is starting to pick up again as uh, people are driving again uh, for the time being. Anyway, that's it for the treasurer's report. Um, next month we'll be doing a more in-depth uh, six-month review. Uh, but for now, this is through September, five months into the fiscal year. Uh, so that's it, unless there's any questions. Anybody have any questions for the treasurer? Hearing none, we'll move on. Um, next item on our agenda this evening is the president's report. Um, we'll start that off with a thank a teacher week proclamation. And proclamation for thank a teacher week 2020. Whereas on March 16, 2020, all U46 schools were shut down due to the pandemic, affecting over 38,000 students throughout 11 communities. And whereas 2,935 school district U46 teachers and administrators had to immediately pivot the way they taught 
in order to provide quality education through distance learning for all students. And whereas U46 teachers and administrators work diligently over the summer to prepare for the 2020-21 school year, including learning new technology and online educational platforms, whereas U46 teachers, administrators, and staff delivered over 1.9 million meals to, the, to children and families throughout the summer and into the school year, and whereas U46 teachers, administrators, and staff prepared classrooms with safety measures and materials for in-person learning while also providing the necessary support for distance learning. And whereas U46 teachers, administrators, and staff continue to work diligently with parents and students to overcome obstacles and in instruct them on successfully participating in distance learning. And whereas our local schools are a vital part of our community fabric and Bartlett values the teachers, administrators, and staff working to respond to the new, unique and shifting challenges created by COVID-19. Now, therefore, that the Village of Bartlett extends its sincere appreciation and esteem to the teachers, administrators, and staff of School District U46 for their outstanding commitment to providing quality education to our student children during this difficult time. Be it further resolved that I, Kevin Wallace, President of the Village of Bartlett, do hereby proclaim that the week of November 16, 2020, will be declared Thank a Teacher Week, dated the 17th day of November, 2020. Next item on our agenda this evening is what everybody's favorite topic is, of course, which is an audit. And everybody, you know, pull up a chair and um, get ready for some real fun because those newbies that are on the board now um, are in for a treat. Um, but I will turn it over, I guess, to Jamie. Is that Hi. correct? All right. That's and, great. Uh, did they tell you got to keep it to three minutes or less? I will do my very best. How's that? Thank you, Jamie. I'll turn it over to Jamie for the audit presentation. Thank you. I'm actually going to share my screen so I have the ability to kind of thumb through some of the documents. I know they're quite lengthy. So if you bear with me here, um, I just want to make sure we're all looking at the, the same pieces. Uh, so you sh all should see in front of you a letterhead with Lauterbach and Eamon at the top. Um, these documents start on page 62 of your board packet, just as reference. Um, so I've kind of individually pulled out the sections here this evening that we will review. A thrilling topic, as the village president indicated. So every year, the village is required under state statute to undertake an audit of the financial statements. Uh, certainly, that is a fairly lengthy process, about six months in reality from start to finish. Um, and certainly does not happen without the coordinated effort of the Village's finance team. So I want to thank in particular Todd, Matt, Millie, and the rest of the department for all of their efforts. Um, as many of you can imagine, 2020 brought some interesting um, nuances as far as getting through the audit, um, sometimes in some you know, flexible, flexible ways. So we certainly appreciate their efforts and we're happy to report another clean audit process for this year. The first document we will be covering this evening is what we call our SAS 114 letter. Uh, this is a required letter to the board each year, basically outlining any issues, findings, um, areas of concern, disagreements with management, um, you'll see a variety of topics covered within this letter. I'm happy to report this evening, we have no findings or disagreements with management or really anything of that nature to report to the board this evening. Uh, so really just standard language within this letter as it relates to those topics. The second item we will be covering in your board packet this evening is what we call our management letter. Management letter is where we have the opportunity to provide what I would say are some housekeeping type recommendations or bring light to the village board on a couple of um, topics uh, as they relate. For example, this year we had two funds over budget as we ended the fiscal year. Uh, certainly just something not necessarily negative, but more the idea of bringing awareness to the board that this is in fact the end result for the year. So our first comment is, in fact, that funds over budget. We had two funds this year, uh, the debt service fund, which really related to the 2009 general obligation bond refunding. Um, so while the fund was over budget, there are long-term savings related to that transaction. And that really came about from issuance costs. 
And then the parking fund, which really relates to uh, downtown holiday lighting and decorations that were not originally budgeted for. Um, so really just to bring forth to the board, there's obviously explanation for both, but we wanna make sure full transparency and disclosure. Uh, we did have one prior comment from last year, which we have provided an update to that indicates funds with deficit net position or deficit equity at the end of the fiscal year. Last year, we reported one fund, the water fund, and most of this relates to the activity for hooking up to the DuPage Water Commission, um, which in theory, as the rate structure continues over the next several years, um, we obviously hope to recuperate that initial loss of that investment in the hookup for DuPage Water. Um, and you'll see that did in fact improve this year. Unfortunately, we did add the golf fund this year. Obviously COVID impact has had a massive impact to any of our, our uh, government clients that operate golf courses. So um, obviously a, a downtick in some of those related revenues. So just wanted to point out those two items. The final document we'll cover is the comprehensive annual financial report or the actual audit document. Uh, this is about 202 pages, so there's a lot to digest. Uh, the goal tonight is really just to cover some of the high level items. The first item I want to review briefly with the board is just to mention that the village did receive what we call the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting. This is a program that is administered by the Government Finance Officers Association and is really the highest level reporting that any government entity can have. There's a fairly stringent checklist and lots of requirements that the village is required to include within their annual audit. Um, and the village earned that award for April 30th, 2019. We'll again be submitting this year's audit to the program, obviously anticipating receipt of that award again for this fiscal year. Next up is the audit opinion itself. As I indicated, we had a very clean audit process. We have issued what we call a clean or unmodified opinion. That means the financial statements as presented are materially correct. As part of that process, we are also required to do an assessment of the overall internal control environment. Uh, certainly, if we had red flags, findings, issues as part of that testing, we would have to bring those forth to the board this evening. And I'm happy to report we had no such findings, so truly a clean audit process. The next section I want to point out is what we call management's discussion and analysis. You'll find 13 pages in the document uh, within this section. It's really intended to be the executive summary. So I always tell our boards, if you read nothing else in detail, I would recommend reading these 13 pages in detail. Uh, it really does provide a nice overview of financial results for the year, trend analysis to the prior year, uh, discussion of major capital asset investments as well as long-term debt activity. Uh, so really a, a wealth of information condensed in about 13 pages that's more digestible than some of the rest of the document itself. Uh, overall, when you go through this section, you will see that the financial position for the village did in fact improve in 2020. Uh, the general fund in particular, which we'll take a look at next, uh, did have a surplus to the tune of about $1.5 million. Ending available fund balance, so fund balance that isn't already set aside or restricted, uh, represents about a 46% reserve or roughly five and a half months of operations being on hand. You'll see most of that surplus is coming from our revenue side. Um, all revenue streams, so all the categories here, in fact, were over budget for the year with the exception of our fines and forfeitures. Um, one item of note is, in particular, income tax. We saw a significant uptick in 2020. Um, obviously, some of the, the recovery of the economy kind of flowing through the financial statements within the 2020 fiscal year. And then the last section I want to point out is what we call our statistical section. This will take you all the way through page 202 of that document and really provides 10 years of trend information for the village. Um, so I always like to point out this section to our boards. There's really a wealth of information. 
Um, as you can see, both financial trends as well as some other trend information, such as revenues, uh, long-term debt, economic indicators, as well as operating information. Um, so that really concludes my presentation, unless there's any specific questions from the board that I can address this evening. Anyone have any questions for Ms. Wilkie? I will pause a little bit just to make sure that nobody's gotten a bad connection or disconnected. Chris, everybody's still connected? What I can see. I have a quick question for Ms. Wilkie. Sure. So in like comparison to, you know, any like other villages is, is mm -hmm. to get this kind of designation or this kind of clean audit is, is this, you know, something that we could be like proud of, you know, is it something that sure. you don't see all the time with? Sure. Yeah. Great question. Um, what I can tell you is not every community participates in that certificate of achievement program. So I think obviously that's a huge, kudos to the village, um, especially as you're going through things like the recent refunding. Um, the bond financial advisors really look very highly upon that program. It means you're really reporting at the highest level. Um, and it also has a lot of transparency within your report because we've provided this st statistical section that really provides kind of a wealth of historical information. Um, with regards to the audit process itself, um, I will tell you the team on, on, in the village, the finance team, they are absolutely a pleasure to work with. Um, not always do we come in and have such kind of good communication and coordination back and forth with the staff. So um, certainly that's always appreciated. And quite frankly, we come in and they're prepared. Um, so they're ready for us. Adjustments have been made. Um, you know, there's not really a, a lot of back and forth that has to happen that we do experience in certain other engagements we work on. So, um, you know, like I said, in comparison to others, you guys are right, right at the top, really. Great, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Gansey. Any other questions for just, Jamie? Just wanna, just wanna say kudos to our staff, that's outstanding. Yeah, well done, Mr. Treasurer and uh, entire team. If there's nothing else, we really appreciate your time today, Ms. Wilkie, and thank you for the report. Thank you. All right. Next, we have uh, questions. Anybody have any questions for staff or reports? Yeah, I have one question I'd like to ask. A uh, couple people in, in uh, residents have asked me, when are the Christmas lights going up in a village? Um, they started going up. Um, the The lights are on the tree, and we will uh, flip the switch on our traditional day. Um, I think that is well. The downtown area, also, Paula. Yeah, we're going to flip them all up on the same day. Uh, okay. Because the uh, the day of the tree lighting, everything gets turned on. Thank you. I have nothing else. Thank you, Ray. Uh, Trustee Danny, anything else? Hearing none, we'll move on to the town hall portion of the meeting this evening. At this point, if anyone would like to address the board, um, please um, raise your hand and the uh, functionality of a Zoom meeting. And I will call on Chris to noti notify us that someone would like to speak. So Chris, do we have any hands up? We do not, Mayor. Okay, I'll give it a minute oh, or two. I'm sorry, one moment. We do have someone. Okay, so uh, we'll, we'll take this relatively slow just because some people have take a little time to find the, the right buttons. So go ahead, um, you wanna go ahead and, and uh, when, once you come on to the Zoom call, whoever is going to be speaking for the town hall in front of the board, um, kindly state your name and your address just so um, our clerk can put that down for the record for the minutes. Jay, could you unmute yourself? There you go. Yeah. My name is Jay Langfelder, 1665 Penny Lane, Bartlett, Illinois. Um, I want to thank uh, Village President uh, Kevin Wallace and the rest of the board for standing with the restaurant business owners, employees, and owners for passing Resolution 2020-109, 
uh, standing with the restaurant owners and um, going again, not going against, but uh, considering all the options of the safety of the community, uh, but also um, for the livelihoods of the restaurant owners and then also their employees uh, because they've been uh, financially um, hindered through this whole um, COVID epidemic. And um, it's very tough in, with all these communities, um, with these restaurants uh, being closed down. And it was back in March, 9th, March 17th, 2020, where it was right St. Patrick's Day when the governor decided to close uh, all the restaurants in the community or in the state of Illinois uh, to curb or flatten the curve of COVID cases. Well, um, as you know, O'Hare's, and I'm using them as an example, um, they were preparing for uh, their St. Patrick's peak. And um, for a food vendor, you know, they're buying all this food and beverages. Um, they were inflicted financially uh, with no recourse. Uh, so I wanna thank the board because you, you and the board, uh, the trustees are leaders in the community, um, considering everything, uh, safety issues, and some families did lose uh, family members. Uh, but it is a safety, um, and you all considered it, uh, because in DuPage County, um, 2,400 um, cases were inflicted um, in one week, but restaurants only had 42 cases. And that was at the bottom of the um, uh, the low end of the spectrum. So, but I want to thank uh, Kevin Wallace for standing up for the business owners, employees, and the community, and the trustees also. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Langfeld. Yeah, appreciate yeah. your comments. Thank you. Yeah, one more, Mayor. Just a okay. moment. All right, Zoe, if you could unmute yourself. Hi, uh, I'm Zoe Heli Kaczynski. I live at 1348 Bay Meadows Drive. Uh, I'm a senior level Girl Scout, a freshman at Bartlett High School and a Bartlett resident. Uh, for my Gold Award project for my Troop 1039, I wanna build a bike path that connects to Gulfstream Drive to Ship Road on the east side of Route 59. This path would connect to my neighborhood since we have no other attachment to other places except the crosswalk on 59, which is dangerous for young kids going out to play. My family and many others go out for walks, runs, and bike rides, and I want a new path to let us go for walks to explore. My friends and I can walk to the local high school, and we can go to other shops and restaurants nearby when it's finally safe enough. When this new trail is built, it will allow others in the community to stay active and healthy while appreciating the nature around them. And finally, not only will it help my neighborhood, but the community surrounding us. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe. We appreciate your uh, bringing that to our attention. We do have the bike run committee. I believe that Trustee Ranke is kind of spearheading that now um, or is getting ready to at some point. So um, there's, your, there's your marching orders. <laughs> We're on it. All right. Thank you, Zoe. Appreciate it. Um, does anyone else like to address the uh, board, uh, Chris? Do you have any other hands up? I don't see any Are chats. There, there is no one else indicating. All right, for those of you that may have had technical difficulties and wanted to speak, um, certainly by all means, um, call the village. Uh, we can, we can uh, hear your uh, comments and, and push it out to the board. Um, next on the agenda this evening is our standing committee report, starting with Building and Zoning Committee, Chairman Ranke. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the only item was uh, uh, was considered on the uh, consent agenda, so nothing further. Thank you, Chairman Ranke. Uh, Community and Economic Development Committee, Chairman Ganzi. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have one item. Uh, we <clears throat> would like to fill the vacancy on the Economic Development Commission, um, effective today, November 17th, for a three-year term expiring uh, November 17th, 2023. Um, so the EDC is a little different from the other boards and commissions in that the members are appointed by the village board for the ordinance creating the EDC. Uh, so we would like to appoint Robert Gorski uh, to the board. Are there any questions or discussions or is he on? Um, Chris, can you find out, can you see if um, Mr. Gorski is on the Zoom? 
Uh, he is not. Okay. Then I will entertain a motion to appoint uh, Robert Gorski to the De Economic Development Commission. Moved. Second. Second. Moved by Trustee Daney, seconded by Trustee Sawanski. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Sawanski? Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Daney? Yes. Ganzi? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Frankie? Yes. That motion carries. And um, if you're listening on the call, Mr. Gorski, we really appreciate your um, willingness to serve the village on the Economic Development Commission. Um, very impressive resume. You guys have it in your packet. And we're looking forward to your, um, your uh, included in that particular committee and your leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Gansey. I believe that's it for your committee. That is it. Thank you. Um, Finance and Golf Committee, Chairman Daney. Thank you, Mr. President. The uh, only item we had on the agenda this evening was covered under consent. We have nothing else for this evening. Thank you, Chairman Daney. Um, License and Ordinance Committee, Chairman Hopkins. Thank you, President Wallace. Item D1, an ordinance reducing the number of Class B liquor license was covered under the consent agenda tonight. That's all we have. Thank you, Chairman Hopkins. Police and Health Committee, Chairman Carbonero. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, there is nothing to report under police and health. Thank you, Chairman Carbonero. Public Works Committee, Chairman Swanski. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the two items covered under Public Works were covered under consent. Thank you, Chairman Swanski. Um, anybody have any new business they would like to discuss? Yeah, uh, Mr. President, I just would like to uh, mention a couple things. Yep. The, uh, the, they're having mobile testing sites for COVID-19 at uh, Hanover Township uh, in conjunction with the Illinois Department of Public Health on uh, November 22nd uh, at eight, uh, it's beginning at eight in the morning till 4 p.m. And as in the Hanover Township offices at uh, 240 South Route 59 and Bartlett Road, West Bartlett Road and Route 59. So I just want to make mention of that. And then also, uh, I really just would like to take a, uh, a moment and wish all of us, uh, residents, the entire community, uh, a very safe and healthy uh, Thanksgiving. I just want to wish everybody, uh, and hopefully we can meet in person again shortly, but I just want to wish all our residents and the board and staff a very happy Thanksgiving. Stay safe and stay healthy. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Trustee Daney. I think that uh, I'll echo those sentiments uh, for Thanksgiving uh, celebrations. Um, just a little heads up. Um, I just actually at five o'clock today got off a call with um, the governor and um, he and ZK, the IDPH um, health director stipulated the th three mitigations, the tier three mitigations. Uh, a few things that stood out to me just so everybody um, knows what was on that call. Um, he wanted to emphasize, if you don't, this is not um, this is not a a um, st shelter in place order um, or anything like that. But it is um, a, a request. If you don't have to do it, don't do it. It was his exact words. Um, uh, this, the uh, Illinois State Police is going to have webinars on enforcement that is, that are going to be coming out. Um, just some facts, IDPH, 1,000 more COVID patients than there were in May. So in May, there were at the peak, there were 4,800 in the hospital. Now there's 5,800 in the hospital. Um, things that you can still do, you can still go get your haircut. Um, there's still um, open guidance to schools. And um, obviously, if it's warm enough, you can still dine outdoors. So those were the kind of some of the highlights from that call. It was a very short 15-minute call. They just wanted to get an update out to everyone. Um, but uh, let's, try, let's try to keep distant, do the three W's, wash our hands, um, safe distance, and um, wear a mask uh, when you're not able to distance. So just thought I'd update you guys on that. Any other new business anyone would like to share? Just a quick question for you. If, if um, what he's saying is a request, um, what was the reason for the mention of the state police? Um, I don't know. I think uh, you'd have to ask his office that. Yeah, I don't know. I want to speak. I don't want to speak for him. Um, I think. I think it's pretty, pretty obvious that there's there there are lots of communities that are um, doing everything they can to try to um, 
keep these small businesses in, in business. Um, so I think there's a similar in the neighborhood of 100,000 businesses that have already closed that will never open again. So yeah, that's what I heard also. But I, I'm not sure what that is, Trustee uh, Carbonaro. I'm not sure what the um, emphasis on that was for. It, was there a mention, like, I understand, like, we're in phase four, but it's tier three. I was trying to do some research on, like, what is there a tier four? Or do we know, like, what the next step is? There, um, there are other mitigation, like, rollbacks um uh, but um you know as part of the restore illinois plan that that's where that's coming from um but it, it is difficult to find the mitigation um check boxes i i looked for that too myself um it is a little difficult to find but um we try and push that information out as we get it um, so that our residents are aware of uh, what those mitigation requirements are. And um, we also sent out this afternoon um, targeted messages to our businesses, um, salons and restaurants, especially because they have um, some of their requirements are a little more varied. So we like to highlight that for them. Yeah. Is that, did I answer your question, Trustee Anderson? Yes, thanks. Okay. All right. Um, if there's nothing else, nobody has any questions or any other info for the staff, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Second. Moved by Trustee Danny, seconded by Trustee Gansey. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Carbonero? Yes. Danny? Yes. Gansey? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Branke? Yes. Swanski? Yes. The board meeting is adjourned.